in this situation, what am I afraid of? Welcome to The Art of Speaking Up, a podcast that empowers professional women to rise. I'm your host, Jessica Guzik, and in this show, I take you undercover into the stories and lessons that I learned, sometimes the hard way, throughout my career. I also talk with working women, leaders, and coaches to show you that no matter what your struggle is and no matter what your career goals are, you already have all the talent that you need to succeed. Welcome to the show. Today, I'm talking about something that is an area that I have really struggled with. And to be honest with you, I don't know a single woman and I can't think of a single woman that I know who has not struggled with excessive niceness in some way, shape, or form. It's a pretty universal thing. It's nothing to be ashamed of at all. And I've spent a lot of time working on this within me because I began to see and understand that if I wanted to progress in my career and move up and have greater roles and greater responsibility and make more money, all of these things that are okay to want, that I encourage women to want for themselves. If I wanted those things in my career, I was going to have to get comfortable with not always leaning on and relying on niceness to ease my feelings of discomfort in certain situations. And so I had to unpack what was going on there, why I was acting that way, and how I could pivot so that I could move forward and show up authentically. And along the way, I uncovered and I realized a lot of different things that I think might be helpful to you, and so I'm going to share them. But what I will say is please don't judge yourself as you're listening to this. This niceness trap is something that a lot of women get stuck in, not because we suck, not because we're weak, not because we're lame, not because we're not strong, We get sucked into this because of social conditioning. This is not our fault. I talked in episode 22 about internalized misogyny and how we take things that we see in the world about how women need to be and act, and we assume they're true for us, and we assume that we need to be and act a certain way in order to be happy and successful and liked by people. And it's all a big lie. (laughs) We don't have to be that way. And being nice and being liked by everyone around us is one of those lies that we're told. And it's subtle and it's sneaky. But my point of this is saying, and, and if you want to go deeper, you can listen to episode 22. But my point is that you didn't do anything wrong. And even though you have this problem and this struggle, you still didn't do anything wrong. And I want you to know that. And I want to help you get out of it. I want to help you get out of it because I think once you start to get out of it, it's going to help you in a few ways. First of all, it's going to help you become closer to your authenticity. Showing up authentically and being who you are feels better. It's less draining, right? It doesn't take so much energy because you're not always putting on this show. So it's going to free up your energy. You're going to feel lighter. You're not going to be as worried. You're not going to be spinning over thoughts in your head as much. You're going to show up as you. And second, it's going to help you express what you actually want to express. When you're able to let go of the niceness, you can move forward and in situations where you do want to disagree or you do want to engage in a healthy debate or you do want to push back against something you don't agree with. In those situations, you will be able to do that. And it doesn't have to feel so deeply uncomfortable. And now I want to start this with a little bit of a mind bender, like a little bit of a a question that might help get you thinking on this pattern of excessive niceness. And that is whether you consider yourself to be a mean person. Now, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess that the answer to that is no. You probably don't consider yourself to be a mean person. And in fact, I would venture to say at your core, you're a good person you have a good heart, you care about doing the right things, you are not an evil person. 
So when you think about getting stuck in excessive niceness, it's not that you're shying away from your true evil core and pretending to be nice. It's that you're taking the niceness, you're dialing it up to this extreme level. And rather than show up as your authentic self who is nice and who does have a big heart and who does care about the people around you, you're amping it up to these crazy amounts that aren't true to who you are. So I just want you to remember that you are a nice person, right? So this isn't about <laughs> this isn't about becoming mean. This is about coming into your authenticity. This is about showing up with a niceness that is real and a niceness that allows you to have some depth. You can disagree and still be nice. You can say, "I don't want to do that" and still be nice. You can say, I'm not sure that's a good idea and still be nice, right? So when we talk about niceness, we're not talking about like the true niceness that makes you a good person. We're talking about all this extra stuff that we do to make the people around us happy, to to try to force them into liking us. We're talking about that. That's the stuff that we want to get rid of. You still get to be a good person. You still get to hold on to your values and show up as someone who is a positive force in the workplace and in your life, but who's not leaning on agreeing with everything and always saying yes in doing things just because you're afraid if you don't do them, people aren't going to like you. So I wanted to clear that up and just help you see <laughs> that you can be nice and you can also strip down your excessive niceness to reveal authenticity which can encompass niceness and it can encompass having a big heart and it can encompass disagreeing and speaking your truth when the time is right. Now, in order to get to the root cause of this excessive niceness and of this urge to please, it can be helpful to step back and examine why it's happening, why you're doing it. And one of the things that often we're trying to do when we're projecting this niceness and agreeing with everything is we're trying to be liked. We want people to like us and we especially don't want them to dislike us. Now, this need to be liked and this need to please and this need to kind of be like a one size fits all for everyone. Often, the energy or the feeling beneath that need is a feeling that if we don't do that, our true core selves that we bring to the table is somehow inadequate. So we need to make sure that no one dislikes us because otherwise they might find out that we don't actually belong here, that we don't belong in our jobs, right? We, we might be found out for who we really are. And so oftentimes, even though niceness projects as this positive, friendly, sing-songy voice, sweet little thing that we project, beneath it, there are actually feelings of unworthiness and feelings of, well, gosh, I don't know if I should really be here, so I better make sure I don't do anything to bother anyone. And this can happen for a couple of reasons, right? It can happen because we're feeling shaky in our confidence and we're feeling shaky in whether we truly belong. But this can also happen because it's very, very natural as women. And in fact, we've been trained culturally that our presence when we're at work, we're at a party, we're in a social situation, doesn't matter where we are. We get universal messaging that some of the value that we bring is through pleasing the people around us, pleasing them by looking attractive, pleasing them by saying the perfect thing, by having the perfect thing. There is a pressure on women to use our presence and use our very existence to make people around us happy, specifically to make men happy, because it wasn't so long ago that women weren't even treated as autonomous beings with their own needs and desires. And so without that, the only role left for us is to fulfill the needs and desires of other people. And that conditioning has stayed with us. So as women, 
it is very easy and very comfortable for us to fall back on this pattern of like, I must make the people around me happy. And this manifests in all kinds of crazy ways. Being nice at work isn't the only thing. I mean, how many of you have gone to a job interview or some sort of situation and felt like you needed to look better than normal and do your hair or your makeup, even though maybe you don't look that way every day at work? It's this It's this need. Most men don't do that, but it's this need to be acceptable and to conform to expectations. And so this can really get us stuck on niceness. So if it is something that you struggle with, you have to have self-compassion because let me tell you, this is not your fault. And what is really important to me, and I talked about this way back when in episode one, is when we talk about the problems that as women we face both in life, but you know, in, in my focus and in this show, the problems we face in the workplace and professionally, that when we talk about those problems, we include this context and we say, you feel this way and you feel like you're getting stuck in excessive niceness because a lot of things around you that the world has told you over and over that you need to be and do. Because when we don't do that, when we don't say, hey, this isn't your fault that this is hard, we perpetuate this cycle where we make women feel worse for having this problem. And it's like, oh, man, I suck. Like, I have this problem, and I'm doing it to myself. I'm being such a loser. I can't get out of my niceness. I'm so weak. No, 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 no. You didn't do anything, right? You and me and this show exists because we're trying to undo some of the bad stuff that's been done to us. So I don't think there are any men listening to this show But if there are, please take note of that when you give feedback to women and make sure you're understanding (laughs) if something that you're criticizing is truly the problem or maybe there's a broader problem and you're actually projecting it onto them. Anyway, I can't go any further in this direction because it'll quickly turn into a feminist rant. But remember this, this struggle is not your fault and it's normal. And as women, we're all in this together. So let's help lift each other out of it. Okay, so if we're falling into this niceness because, A, the world pressures women to do this, and B, we're afraid we don't belong at work, so we're using the niceness to cover up, how do we move forward? And this is where I'm going to nudge you to do a deeper inquiry, and only you can do this. And I want you to get into very sleuthy, very detective-y mode, and I want you to start paying very close attention to what specific situations at work make your excessive niceness flare up? Like, when does that dial get turned to the max, like cranked all the way up and you're being so nice and so people-pleasing? Notice what environments make it come out more intensely. Notice there are specific people that make it come out more intensely. And once you notice your own patterning, your patterning, when you can figure out your patterning, that is gold. That is gold for figuring out how to move forward because your patterning will reveal to you a layer of beliefs that you didn't even know you had. So you pay attention to the situations that really trigger it, and then you stop and ask yourself what's going on. So let me give you a real-life example from me. And then I really encourage you to just go out and try this on your own. So when I paid attention to my niceness, I noticed many different situations that would cause it to just flare up like crazy. But one one of them, which I think is really useful for this example, is I noticed that I was very, very, very nice around junior people people that I had some influence over because I'm more senior than them in the workplace. Okay, great. Now, once I notice this pattern that I have a specific tendency around a specific type of person, a person who is on my team who's more junior than me, this excessive niceness, not authentic niceness because I am authentically nice, excessive, then I stop and ask myself, what is going on here? And when you do this inquiry, There's a way that you can phrase this question that can really help you get to the bottom of it. And the way that you can phrase this question is to say, in this situation, what am I afraid of? So I'll say it one more time. 
in this situation, what am I afraid of? So I get quiet and I get really honest with myself. And I say, for me, wow, in this situation, I'm really afraid of my team members not liking me. I'm really afraid that they'll think I'm a micromanager. I'm afraid that they'll think I'm mean. And if I get really honest with myself, like really real, like real, real, real talk, we're getting really real here, I'm afraid they'll think I'm a bitch. Okay, now let me explain something to you all who are listening. I'm not. (laughs) I'm a nice person. I am so far, so far away from that horrible, horrible word that I hate. That word, that's not me. That's not my word. That's a word (laughs) that us women are told that we need to be afraid of being labeled as, right? This goes a little bit back to the feminist rant, but at the root of my fear of not being liked is a deep, irrational fear because women in the world that we're in get very punished. And there's a lot of social punishment when we get angry or when we're not nice. And I think I talked about this in episode 16, I think it was. As women, it can be really risky for us to express this full range of emotion. And when women express anger in any kind of situation, a lot of times the world that we live in says, oh, she's a bitch. And so I have this fear for me. It comes back to this personal fear that my team's going to see me as a micromanager and this more global, socially, culturally driven fear that I've adopted that I might be a bitch. And none of this is true. And here's why there's value in asking the question of what am I afraid of here and really digging deep and bringing that out. Because once I know that, it has less power over me because I'm aware that it's there. I'm aware that I'm operating on this fear of being a mean woman. And I'm also aware that I might have some personal hangups and insecurities about being perceived as a micromanager or being difficult. And I can ask myself, I can say, is there a way for me to not always be the nicest, 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 nicest manager in the whole world and still be loved by my team and adored? And and not in a fake way, but in a way of like, they see me for who I am, which is like, I care about, you know, I care about them. And even if I have to say like, oh, this piece of work needs more work, that's not going to sever the relationship, right? So. It allows me to go down a line of questioning where I can understand how I can be a truthful manager, a transparent manager, and still have deep respect and compassion for my team members. And this is so powerful. It takes us women. It takes me and anyone else can adopt this. It takes us out of this line of thinking that we are one dimensional and we are either nice or we are a bitch. And there's nothing in between that. Because the truth of the matter is who we are as a human, our values and how we show up and what we care about, that's not going to change no matter what kind of message we have to deliver to someone. So if we have to tell someone something that feels like pushing back or feels like, quote unquote, not nice, we can say it, we can be truthful And we can still honor our values and show up as who we want to show up as, right? So let's not fall down the trap that says there's only one way to be a good person. And that way is by never doing anything that could be remotely controversial. Because that is a lie. That is a lie that will keep us small. The way that we be a good person is by adhering to our values. And when we deliver a message that feels, quote unquote, not nice, we deliver it in line with our values, with empathy and compassion and openness, right? So an example might be if someone sends you something and it's not what you asked for, you might feel yourself wanting to go into niceness and not say anything and just take it as it is. But you can stop and inquire, how can I move forward in a way that's authentic and honors my values, Well, maybe a way to do that is to not make any assumptions. And instead of telling the person, this is wrong, you did this wrong, 
ask a question to get to understand why they did it the way they did it. So say, thank you for putting this together for me. Can you tell me about why you decided to do it this way? Boom. You opened up the conversation. Now you get to go explore with that person why it is that way without it being a confrontation. It's not, it's not a confrontation. We're all, we're all at work to work together and move towards the same goals. And so if you're struggling, if you're struggling with this topic of niceness, I want you to start observing where is it heightened? Where does your niceness really flare up and just like go off the charts? And I want you to do an inquiry. I want you to do an inquiry of what this might mean and ask yourself, what am I afraid of? And then once you do that, once you start to unpack what you're afraid of, then you get to do the fun work of rebuilding and moving forward and deciding how you want to authentically show up now that you know that these fears that you have are probably not real or true or legitimate. So if this is something that you are interested in exploring and you want to go do this, I know that there's a lot of steps that I shared. I'm going to write all of it out. I'm going to post it in the Facebook group so that you can run through it yourself and do this inquiry and do this investigation. So it'll literally be something that you can download and journal in and track and see what you're learning and see what's coming up for you. And if you want to find the Facebook group and do this inquiry. Maybe we could do it all together. That would be really fun. You just go on Facebook and search for The Art of Speaking Up or go to facebook.com slash group slash The Art of Speaking Up and ask to join. And this will be a really fun and important and empowering, empowering exploration because moving through something like niceness is about taking back your power. And that is the name of the game. Like that is one of the most important things in all of this. So I'm going to close this by saying that if you're struggling with excessive niceness, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's basically a universal condition that women experience that can be very, very difficult in the workplace. And if you want to go deeper on this topic or hear more on this topic from a very different angle, check out my episode with Vicki Joseph because she is a coach and all she does, her sole focus of her work is helping women who are way too nice, helping them to speak up and assert boundaries. And in that conversation, I asked her how she works with her clients and how she helps them work through this. And we actually did a mini role play exercise where she gave examples of how to be more assertive at work and how to push back in certain work situations. So it was a great conversation. It was so fun. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. And with that, I wanted to thank you for listening to the show. I am so happy to have you Your support means the world to me. And to those of you who have reached out and DM'd me and sent me the kindest things, thank you so, so much. If your heart is having a moment of, I like this show, how can I help? Give me a rating in the iTunes store, preferably a good one. It'll make my day. And with that, it is time for me to sign off. And I'm super excited to catch you in the next episode. And just remember that you're allowed to show up as who you are. And please give yourself permission to do that. All right. I'll catch you soon. Bye.